Hello, this is Virtualis Chess Noob learning and having fun with chess. Today we're going to have a look at the Chestnut Evo prototype, at how it plays online games on the chess.com, Lee Chess, and Chess Kid platforms. Well, let's go take a look. All right, so here we have the board set up. First thing I'm going to say from the outset, as a reminder, because the context is so important, this is a prototype board. So the software is not complete, the software is in alpha, which means some things are not working properly. You can imagine they will probably be improved. However, we need to take it as it is. Some of the things that aren't working properly, I think are forgivable. I'm very sure Chestnut will be able to sort it out. Some things, however, I think are a little bit more problematic. And I will not sugarcoat those things that I identify. I'll be upfront with you. And they're things that I really want Chestnut to work on. Now, in the main UI, a bot match. Um, now, I've shown you a match against Maya before. The second main function is online matches, a really important feature of the board. Let's click online matches. The board supports at the moment three platforms, and they're the platforms that uh, Chess uh, Chestnut has advertised. Chess.com, Lee Chess, Chess Kit. So Chess.com and Lee Chess are clearly really important. They're the two main platforms that people play on. According to a poll on my channel, uh, the platform of greatest interest is chess.com. Very understandable, has the biggest uh, member base. Uh, Lee Chess, of course, very important. Lots of people play on Lee Chess. I mostly play on chess.com, but sometimes we'll play on Lee Chess as well. Chess Kid, uh, really important if the board is appropriate for children. I will test all three. Well, let's have a look at chess.com first. There we go. Now you will see here it's loaded up on my profile because I've previously logged myself in. You might have noticed in some of the other channels review of the prototype board that whenever they load up chess.com, it looks like they've loaded it up as a guest. Now I think at least one of the reasons why that's the case is with the prototype alpha software, for some reason, whenever you try to uh, log into chess.com on the panel, it causes the device to crash. Now, eventually, I was able to get around this by plugging in a USB keyboard onto the device so that I can actually log in. It looked like there was some problem with the uh, pop-up keyboard when, uh, when you click on the places where you put in your username and password. Doesn't seem to happen on the Lee Chess uh, website because this does load up the websites of the platforms. For some reason it caused it to crash on chess.com. Now, this is something I think chess.com should be able to fix. Now, in, um, now to demonstrate chess.com online matches, I'm not going to play against a real person. It's a little bit disrespectful to do that to a real person while I'm doing a review. Uh, I have to admit, it's also a little bit hard to play when I've got the cameras and I'm sort of sitting in a slightly odd place. But to demonstrate that it is definitely possible, this last game I played here was against a real human uh, and using the ball. And here you can see it's loading up basically the full chess.com website. This was a, re a relatively rapid game. I wish I actually did show this game uh, for the review because I won pretty quickly a very, very nice, uh, it was a very, very nice Vienna game where I won pretty well, high accuracy over 90%. All right, let's go back to the home. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play against one of the bots, uh, basically to play against uh, the computer. So versus computer, uh, let's, uh, let's, ooh, let's load up Jimmy. You know, as you know, I always bully Jimmy. Uh, now, one of the things that I think Chestnut really needs to sort out with online games is you don't know whether you're gonna get the white or black pieces. And you can't start a game get the black pieces and then move the pieces to the opposite side of the board. Because you know, once you start a game, you need to start, you can't do that. And so pretty much when you play an online random matchup, which is what I'm, I personally mostly use the boards for, you have to be able to rotate the board because that's the simplest way to get the black or white pieces. The problem of course is if we rotate the board, 
the screen becomes upside down. Uh, and there doesn't appear to be a feature where you can flip the screen so that, uh, let's say I have the black pieces, I now sit on the black side, flip it so that the screen is with the correct orientation. I think that Chestnut really needs to have that feature. There should be some sort of button you can press, preferably a hardware button where at a tap of the button you can rotate the screen because I think, to be perfectly honest, it's really necessary. All right, let's start playing Jimmy. So I'm gonna start, there we go. And as you can see, there is a little bit of a delay. Now, how Chestnut is making this work is that they're using what they call a neural processing unit, doing some sort of uh, machine vision uh, detection to actually identify what is on the screen, what is on the board, on the screen, and being able to replicate that uh, on the electronic pieces here. Uh, it doesn't go through a chess.com's API. The advantage with this is that this should work regardless of, you know, of the API. It potentially, maybe you can even use other websites other than chess.com and Lee Chess. So let's move that there. I'm gonna play a uh, Vienna. Now the disadvantage at the moment with the software is that you can see there are little, you know, little glitches. It's a little bit buggy. And also it's a little bit slow. Uh, I hope that Chestnut will be able to sort this out, that maybe it's purely an optimization issue. Uh, and I think it should be possible because I think Chestnut does a very similar system with the Chestnut Air and the Chestnut Pro. Insofar as the app on your device, your phone or a tablet, I think on the chess.com platform, it uses some vision detection of the pieces on the screen as well. Now, with the Chestnut Air and Chestnut Pro, with the app uh, on, uh, for those platforms, Lee Chess uses the Lee Chess uh, APIs for chess.com, I'm pretty sure it uses a similar system and it seems to detect well. So I'm hoping that this is purely an optimization issue. Now, queen has jumped to that position. That clearly is not a good move because, yep, I can attack the queen with the knight. You can see there's a little bit of glitchiness, a little bit of slowness there. There we are. Uh, ooh, what do we do next? <laughs> I only have one queen, luckily I had the queen. Aha, and you can see it doesn't automatically do it. Yeah, wasn't on persaunting before. Yeah, so these little, little gremlins, little, little gremlins. Yeah, have to. Here we 
go. Mate. Yeah, and as you can see, few little gremlins at the moment with chess.com. So had a little bit of a, a little bit of niggle with an en passant move and also a little bit of an elegance with queening that you know I had to sort of tap tap the screen. Now hopefully uh, hopefully Chestnut will be able to address some of those issues. Well, let's go now look at Lee Chess. All right, so the board is set up again. Let's have a look at Lee Chess. Now I think it's actually reasonably working well with Lee Chess. Uh, now again, I'm not gonna play against a real human for the demonstration. It's a little bit disrespectful, I think, and it can actually just take a long time, especially if a game doesn't quite work out. But just to show I have played against a, uh, a, a human, a full match. Uh, so if I look at my profile, this last game that I played, which I lost, was against a real person. Now let's go back to the home screen and I'm gonna play against the computer, play with computer. Oh, you know, strength, let's say with white. And there's same issues in terms of um, needing uh, you know, some mechanism so that we can flip the screen, uh, especially with a random matchup where we don't know whether we're going to get the white or black pieces. So, let's go. Yep, you can see a little bit of a delay. Maybe not quite as bad, I think, with Lee Chess compared to uh, Chess.com. I don't know, maybe it's about the same. All right, so Max Lang defense in the uh, Vienna game. Fairly flawless, I suppose. Um, all right, so lastly, online match, Chess Kid. Now, with Chess Kid, I haven't played a game on the platform uh, because, look, I'm an adult, I'm not gonna play a child. <laughs> it doesn't seem very fair. Uh, but I think you can play bots. Um, so let's, let's try to do that. Um, I'm not super familiar with the platform. Let's have a look. Play. Play a bot. Oh, I don't know. Uh, yo, okay. Let's see. Oh, cool. Music. Let's turn the music off. Okay. Here we go. What? Okay. It's gonna play a Scandi, are they? Yep, so you can see the little bit of a delay there. Um, fascinating. That's a fascinating choice. <laughs> yep. So, you no know, chess kid works pretty well. All right. So, what do I think? Firstly, just to remind everyone, it is a prototype board. Software is in alpha. Now, within that context, Chestnut clearly has made a product that does work, not perfectly at the moment, but clearly does work. So they make use of that machine vision system to be able to read uh, the website. They can see the 2D board and all the pieces and work out where they are. That system is working. I think clearly some optimization is required in terms of how it interfaces with those websites, particularly for some of the uh, special maneuvers like on percent, like, uh, like a porn promotion, needs a little bit of work. I'm reasonably confident that Chestnut should be able to fix that. You know, things like making the, 
uh, the movement of the pieces just a little bit more quick so that there isn't a delay or as much of a delay between the board moving or you making a move and it being reflected, I think that's quite important. And I think that's the work that Chestnut has in front of them before they can you know, release this as a retail product. Some of the missing features, which I sort of mentioned during the video, for online play, particularly random matchups against a internet opponent, there has to be a way for uh, for the user to easily flip the screen. So uh, if I set up the board with white towards me and I get the black pieces, I cannot spend you know a minute rearranging the pieces. No, the game's going to a board. Um, most likely I'm going to turn the board around. I don't want to have the screen to be upside down. There needs to be a feature where at a tap of a button, prefer preferably one of the hardware buttons, I should be able to rotate the screen. Uh, but I think all the ingredients are there, all the rudiments are there. I think Chestnut can really make this quite a great product. I, I have to admit that, you know, actually not having to connect the board to my phone uh, and then using an app and navigating the app on my phone to start a game, uh, it was really actually quite nice. So I think Chestnut really has a uh, you know, they had a good idea about including and attaching the user interface with the tablet onto the board. I think it is a good idea. You know, in terms of value, in terms of price, I think you know, everyone needs to make their own decisions about that. But I think, you know, is this potentially better than having to connect to an app? Yes, as long as there's at least feature parity as long as you know some of those delays we saw is no worse than connecting it via Bluetooth to my uh, to my phone, with those additional features as well. Yes, I think it potentially could uh, may very well be from a user perspective, user interface perspective, better than uh, the Chestnut Air and the Chestnut Pro. Anyway, that's my uh, that's my review of the online play functions of the Evo. Uh, if you sort of have any thoughts, any comments, leave them, in, uh, leave them in the comments of the video. Thank you very much.